Welcome to Holly Terminator X Training Part 32. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our launch control and our anti lag feature set up in our Terminator X software. So, if we're at the drag strip and we want to launch and get consistent launches at the line, we need to use a launch control. Now, it's going to hold us at a fixed RPM and allow us to launch very consistently. Now, we need to go into our software and configure this. There's a couple of different ways we can go about this. I'm going to share the way that I set up based on vehicle speed and based on throttle position to activate and turn off our launch control. So naturally aspirated and supercharged applications, this will be a great way to activate your launch control. Now, if you're turbocharged and you want to launch with boost off the line, we have to integrate our anti-lag feature in conjunction with our launch control. I'm going to show you how to use some advanced tuning functionality within our software to accomplish a launch control. So retarding our spark timing and adding our fuel so that we build the boost that we need at the line. It's a relatively simple process, but again, we have a lot to cover within the video here. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check all this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up a launch control and our anti-lag if we have a turbocharged engine and we want to build boost off the line. Now, we can set this up in a variety of different ways with our Holly Terminator X. I'm going to show you how I implement using a hands-off approach, not having to wire any additional switches to turn on our launch control. Now again, we can turn on our launch control if we want to wire a switch in, like a clutch switch or a trans brake. If we're on the trans brake, we want that to activate at the same time, but this is going to be an alternative way to go in and do that. Let's go in and take a look at how we're going to be setting this up. So first and foremost, if we jump in our file here, we're going to go to our Spark ICF icon. And then if we go down in here to our rev limits, we're going to find that we have our main Spark rev limiter, and then we have here a rev limit one. Rev limit one can be used for all kinds of things. We talked about doing engine failsafe protection with a rev limit one. This is going to be an alternative way we can implement a rev limit one for use for a launch control. So what we'll find here is we go to our rev limit one, we click enable. We have to set the type of how we want it to cut. We have some options. We have fuel only, spark only, fuel and spark, soft, spark high only. Usually I choose spark only here as my option. This will provide a spark cut when we want to launch our car. This is generally going to be the safest way to go about working with this rev limiter, especially on a launch control. So we want to launch off the line. We're going to be sitting on this rev limiter pretty hard. We don't want it to cut fuel if we're in boost with a supercharged or a turbo engine that could start to lean out our mixture too much and get our EGTs too hot. So I'm going to choose my option here as spark only. And we have to go in and set up our next details here. This is the on and off RPM. This is going to be the hysteresis we want this to be applied within. Now, when we're dealing with a rev limiter, we usually want to have this spread between 50 to 100 RPMs of each other as we go between our on and our off RPM. So this is also going to be depending on how we want to launch your car, how much RPM you need to launch on a particular chassis and tire combo and track conditions. You're working with this. This is going to be pretty much a wide variety for all kinds of cars. So a street car with street tires would have much, much lower RPM than maybe something like a, uh, a, a car with a tube chassis with a 20 inch tall slick on it. So again, you'll have to know what you want to launch your car at to program this. I'm going to put in some generic values here. I'm going to assume on my car I have slicks and my chassis can handle a 5,000 RPM launch. Now this is going to be assuming I'm either naturally aspirated or I'm, I'm going to be in a supercharged state with my engine. I'm not going to be in a turbocharged uh, application. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video because we have a different way we need to work with this rev limit one. What we can find here, again in our rev limit one, we need to set our on RPM. I'm going to be setting my off RPM to something slightly below this so that when it cuts, it cuts very quick. If we have these spread too far apart, it can have kind of a laggy effect as it's hitting the rev limiter. So I'm going to set this to something like 4950 or 4900. That'll go in and provide a nice crisp spark rev limiter when I'm on my two-step control. Now this is only part of the process and the setup here for making this work. We'll find here if we go to our inputs, we're now going to find we have a rev limit one here that we have to account for. Right now under our input type, we can see it set as ground or as a 12 volt. We need to go and specify how we plan on running this and how we plan on making this work. Now, if we're gonna be doing this in the tra traditional sense, we could use a clutch switch or our trans brake if we want it to activate the launch control, the rev limiter when we're at the drag strip. So this is probably the most basic way to work with this. We would specify, again, trans brake control, most likely it's a 12 volt. We would tie into our trans brake when it's powered on. If we're dealing with a clutch switch, a ground would be much better. In this state for a clutch switch, 
we'd find that one leg of the clutch switch is going to go to our chassis ground. The other leg would go to the pin that we're specifying here. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.